for a fun experiment, I went around to a few of these works righteousness channels that have false gospels, and in the search engine on their channel, I typed in the word peace just to see what would come up. And I got all kinds of funny results and different things. And I didn't see any good teachings on the doctrine of peace as the scripture lays it out. Sometimes I've mentioned in the videos that I've done how we don't operate from our human emotions and let that be a guide for truth. But we let the scriptures teach us what the truth is and then we conform our feelings around the truth. And so when it comes to peace, that's the way it is. It's not like we are devoid of any emotions or feelings. We want to have peace. We want to have emotions and feelings. We just want them to be proper and true. We want our feelings to conform to God's mind and his perspective. And so there's this phrase in the Old Testament that's repeated a few times. There's no peace for the wicked, saith the Lord. That the wicked have no peace. And that's probably why when I go around and search a lot of these false gospel channels and type in the word peace, there's no doctrines of peace taught on their channel. And if they do try to make an attempt at it, it's based on some temporal obedience of your own. It's some conditional thing based on yourself. It's not an actual peace. As Jesus says, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And he says, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Now, that is not the message that you're going to get from these false gospel teachers. You're not going to get that you shouldn't let your hearts be troubled or let them be afraid. They're going to constantly be teaching you to be afraid of God and to fear God. Now, this peace that we have towards God is in direct relation to Jesus Christ bearing all our punishment for all our sins and all our iniquities. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. So we see it says, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. Why do we have peace through someone dying? It's because of what it accomplished. It's not just any person dying. It's the Son of God. And when he died, he'd offered up the most priceless, valuable thing in the universe. That would take away our transgressions and take away our iniquities as far as the east is to the west so far as he removed our transgressions from us and he did this through the cross without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins and so this is why we have peace through the cross is because we have forgiveness of sins through it the punishment that brought us peace was upon him by his stripes we are healed see it says by his stripes we are healed and according to colossians 1 he reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body by his death, that we might be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. So this is one of the reasons why we have peace, not as the world gives, does he give to us, is because we are holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And according to Hebrews 10.14, he did this forever by one offering. He has perfected forever those who are sanctified. This is why we have a forever peace with Jesus. My peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let them be afraid. See, according to Hebrews 10.14, he has perfected us forever in the sight of God by that one single offering where he was wounded for our transgressions, where he was crushed for our iniquities. And the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. So we have a forever peace because of forever perfect atonement on our behalf. And so Jesus is saying, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So not only do we have peace through Jesus Christ, through a perfect atonement that he has provided, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed but also through the knowledge of the not guilty verdict that we have by our faith in him. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. So therefore, having been justified by faith, which is a not guilty verdict, the scripture is saying we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. So through the knowledge of the not guilty verdict, which is something that people are going to try to rob you of, they're going to try to rob you of the peace that Jesus gave, not as the world gives, does he give to us. They're going to try to take it away by telling you that you have law, performance, and obedience that you need to bring to the table to establish peace. But the Bible tells us that he has established peace for us. 
that when it comes to all things in Christ, whether things in heaven or things in earth, he has reconciled those things to himself and he has made peace through the blood of the cross, according to scripture. He reconciled all things to himself, whether things in heaven or things in earth, having made peace through the blood of the cross. So there's peace through the blood of the cross. That's why, how we have peace, not through your performance, not through your efforts, not through what you do, not through tears you shed, not through blood you shed, but through the blood of the cross. That's how we have peace. And this peace is not as the world gives does he give to us. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The reason why Jesus is saying this is in part because people will try to take away that peace. They'll try to let your heart be troubled. They'll try to make your heart afraid. They'll try to make you believe that you're not right with God on the basis of his blood. Or they'll try to make you believe that you're not justified by your faith in Christ. Therefore, have been justified by faith. We have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that justification is completely independent from the law. We maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. That a person has a non-guilty verdict. They're justified, independent from law performance. Now, false teachers will teach the very opposite. They'll try to take away your peace by making you believe that there is some measure of justification that you get through the law by which then you can have peace based on your performance and your effort and it's not based on the blood but the peace that we have is based on the blood of Christ and through the justified not guilty verdict that we have by our faith and so a big theme with these false teachers that teach false gospels is to get you to be afraid to try to make you think that you aren't justified to make you believe that there's some kind of punishment that you'll be facing on the day of judgment yet we have the scripture telling us by this love is perfected with us that we may have confidence in the day of judgment that as he is so we are in this world there's no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear because fear has to do with punishment and the one who fears has not been made perfect in love now these verses absolutely have to do with judgment day and it's saying that the one who's fearing judgment and punishment has not been made perfect in love. See, the one who's fearing punishment hasn't understood what Jesus Christ has done for us, that the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we are healed, Colossians 1.22, he reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body by his death that we might be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. So by his stripes we are healed, we are holy without blemish and free from accusation. Just as God is, we are like him. And that's why it says, by this love is perfected with us, that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, that as he is, so we are in this world. Just as he is holy without blemish and free from accusation, so are we in this world. See, the one who hasn't come to understand that hasn't been made perfect in the knowledge of God's love. They're fearing punishment. They're not having confidence right now, so they're thinking to themselves, how could I ever have confidence in the day of judgment? Well, you can have confidence right now because God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And that's right now, in this world, we are the righteousness of God as he is, so we are here in this world. See, it says he reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body by his death that we might be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. So in God's sight, and that's what matters, is God's mind and his perspective. We are holy without blemish and free from accusation as he is, so we are in this world. We see in the scripture it says what God has made holy, let no man call unholy. So when I say that these false teachers are trying to take away your peace. They can't take away a fact. They can try to take away a conceptualization for a time in your mind, but the fact is always true. The fact is always true that you have peace toward God. Whether you let that knowledge reign in your mind or heart or not, it's still a fact that you have peace toward God. And that's why we have admonishments in the scripture that say, let the peace of God rule in your hearts by which you were called to peace into one body and be thankful. So it's somewhat dependent upon us to let the peace of God rule in our hearts. We do that by conceptualizing the truth of the not guilty verdict that we have by our faith independent from the law and through what the blood has accomplished. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. That's why Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. 
See, a troubled heart and a fearful heart stands in direct contradiction and opposition to the peace that we have toward God. And so they stand in opposition to one another. Fear and peace can't in harmony abide in the same house. So what Jesus is saying is, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. That perfect love casts out all fear. And this is what Jesus is saying. He has a perfect love for us by which he has a perfect peace that he has given us. My peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So in the scripture, when it says there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has to do with punishment, and the one who fears has not been made perfect in love. The scripture is showing us that the knowledge of God's perfect love casts out any fear concerning punishment over sin on the day of judgment. So thieves and robbers can attempt to try to steal your peace. They cannot steal a fact that's based on the blood of Christ. They can try to take away conceptualizations of that peace. It's up to us to let the peace of God rule in our hearts by which we were called to peace into one body. We do that by contending earnestly for the faith, which was once and for all delivered to the saints, that we contend earnestly for it in our own minds. We have to defend the faith for ourselves in our own minds when these people come and they try to take away the knowledge of the peace that we have toward God, we remind ourselves of the justified not guilty verdict. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. This peace is not as the world gives, does he give to us. Jesus is saying, let not our hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. We are justified. We are not guilty before God. And on the basis of this knowledge of God's mind and his perspective, we have peace toward God through this justified verdict, which is independent from the law. We maintain a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. One of the verses I like to bring up when I'm talking about this subject is in the Old Testament that says, He will keep you at perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because you trust in him. And that's the gospel that we hold to, that we're trusting in Jesus Christ for our righteousness, for our salvation, for our eternal life, for our sanctification, for everything. He that did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not freely with him give us all things? So our focus is on Christ. He that gave us his son and he that through him will give us all things. So if you're worried that something's been left out, and that's the idea that a lot of people have, something's been left out in salvation. There's something that I have to bring to the table. You don't have to bring anything to the table. God brings everything to us. He that did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not freely with him give us all things? So he will keep you at perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because you trust in him. We trust in him for everything. And because we have taken ourselves out of the equation, we have a perfect peace. If See, if you have yourself in the equation, you can't have the peace because it says he will keep you at perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him, not he will keep you at perfect peace whose mind is stayed on yourself and your performance and your obedience and what you do and what you can bring to the table. See, he will keep you at perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because you trust in him and we're trusting him for everything. The wicked are those who do not have faith in Jesus Christ. They are the ones who are not righteous. They are the ones who are looking to their works or their performance, and they're not looking to Christ. They're not looking for Christ for peace or for righteousness. They're looking to their performance and other things, but he will keep you at perfect peace. His mind is stayed on him because you trust in him. And we're trusting Christ for our right standing before God as he has promised. As the scripture says, how much more were those who received the abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in this life through the one Christ Jesus. So we receive a gift of righteousness and the Bible says the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. So we receive a irrevocable gift of righteousness, a righteousness that is completely independent from the law on the basis of faith, as it says in the book of Philippians, may I be found in him not having a righteousness of my own which comes through the law, but that which comes through faith in Jesus Christ, even the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. So by the grace of God, the purpose of my video and the purposes of all my videos is to try to edify the saints and to build them up in the faith. Only God can cause increase. Only God can cause the growth. And I pray and hope that he uses this as means.
and that from these scriptures, if you're a believer, that you'll conform your mind to God's thinking and his perspective, that you'll see that you have a justified, not guilty verdict independent from the law. And on the basis of this justification, we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Not as the world gives, does he give to us. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And this is in direct relation to not fearing punishment over sin on the day of judgment that by this love is perfected with us, that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, that as he is, so we are in this world. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has to do with punishment, and the one who fears has not been made perfect in love. And so I hope you will let your mind be conformed to the mind of God, that you'll be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you'll be not conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The pattern of this world is to be afraid, to be very, very afraid, Jesus says, in me you'll have peace, in the world you'll have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. The pattern of this world is to have fears based on their troubles. But see, the root of all life is based on God, and we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Anything that comes out of life and circumstance, we know that no matter what, no matter what trouble we have in the world, there's a greater peace that supersedes all of that because the one who's in control of all things and works all things according to the counsel of his will, we have peace with. And God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and are the called according to his purposes. So there will be troubling circumstances in this world, but Jesus says that in me you'll have peace, in the world you'll have trouble. Take heart, I have overcome the world. He's saying that despite the troubling circumstances that we have in this world, we have peace in him. And we can also have peace through the knowledge that even though we are having troubling circumstances in this world, that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and are the called according to his purposes. That God causes all things to work together for good, even those troubling circumstances. He's causing all things to work together for good. And that can be the situation for a lot of us at some point in our life where the storms of life are trying to take away our peace because of the trouble. But Jesus is saying that in him we have peace. In him we have peace through a justified, not guilty verdict, through a perfect atonement. The troubling circumstances in this world are not in relation to sin and God punishing us. See, Jesus is saying, in me you'll have peace. In me you'll have peace, where you have a justified, not guilty verdict, where your sins have been removed as far as the east is to the west, and you have a perfect atonement, where I have made you holy without blemish and free from accusation. In me you'll have peace. In the world you'll have trouble. Take heart, I've overcome the world. In the world you'll have trouble, but that trouble is not based on God's anger. He's not punishing you for sin. In the world you'll have trouble. But in me you'll have peace, that peace is based on a not guilty verdict, that we're holy without blemish, free from accusation, based on a perfect atonement. If you're a believer in this world, you are holy without blemish and free from accusation. If you're having trouble in this world because of troubling circumstance, it's not because of the anger and the wrath of God and the punishment for sin. According to scripture, we're heaven ready right now. Jesus Christ has already justified us. He could take us to heaven right now, but he's leaving us here to edify and build up the body of Christ. It has been granted to you on the behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but to suffer for his sake. So it has been granted to us on the behalf of Christ to believe in him, but to also suffer for his sake. And that suffering is not in relation to sin. The suffering is that even though we're heaven ready right now and God could take us to heaven completely 100% justified, he's leaving us here in this world where there's suffering, trouble, death, disease, and dying. He's leaving us here for the sake of the body of Christ, for the work of the ministry, for the building up and the edifying of the saints till we all reach to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. So I'm just going to leave these contemplations short this evening. I hope this blesses somebody as you consider these things. And I hope you have a wonderful evening. God bless.